Mm -hmm. We've obviously done this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too good, either. No? Is no, no. that your first shot? No, I shot two that. Mm -hmm. I was as society becomes more and more urban, we, we're kind of losing touch with the outdoors. Uh, we've got people moving off the land, farm sizes are getting much bigger, so there's less people living in the rural communities. Um, so I think we're kind of having a disconnect between Mother Nature and, and ourselves being urbanites. We are facing this massive extinction of wildlife, which is a, uh, is a, is a, is a hurricane uh, mounting and building upon not only human experience, but human opportunity on this planet. We are currently in one of the great extinction crises uh, of world history, geological history. And we are facing uh, losses economically, spiritually, culturally, emotionally, uh, and from a food acquisition point of view that will carry great long-term implications for the future of humanity as well as for the future of wildlife. What's the future of wildlife going to depend on? The situations, the problems, the picture is much bigger than any one discipline. We have to join forces with people from other disciplines, not just the physical, biological sciences, but the social sciences and the economic field um, to get our arms around these very complex problems. It takes teams of people with different specialties, different ways of looking at problems, different backgrounds uh, to creatively approach these problems. And most importantly, it's going to take better awareness of people who aren't specially trained like we are. Um, so environmental education is a huge element in it because people are really only going to take action for things they know about and care about. So we all have a role in spreading the knowledge we have and helping people um, make those connections that they might not otherwise. We have to educate everyone because oftentimes it's, uh, it's people who know nothing about wildlife that will exert the biggest impact on the habitats that wildlife depend upon and we can't just uh, we can't just do that by educating them through into their head but we have to also tap into their heart and that's what stays with you and if we want to educate the uh, the public uh, we have to tap into those those things and uh, and try to instill a feeling of their importance to uh, to people and how that how that wildlife can affect them or their children in uh, in some way because if they have no personal attachment either directly or indirectly through their, their children. Uh, why should they care? We grieve for what we know, planning for the future, embracing climate change and the causes for it that uh, realistically, if, if a greater percentage of the population over time does not embrace that, then, uh, then we're in tough shape as humanity because we just have one world but seeing other parts of the of the world and meeting other people who have different points of view changes your perspectives we Japanese believe the nature is a part of us the wildlife is a part of our part of with us so it's just you know it's a part of our systems for right? humans is not the, the separate from the wildlife. We are just being part of the biodiversity. That's why wildlife is always important to us. When I came into this profession, there weren't women in it. So it was kind of tough in the beginning being the odd one out. But as women started coming in, I've worked with them to try to create a, 
a little smoother path for women coming behind us and to encourage women to come into this profession. Is all sort of advocacy groups, if we want to call them that, are important. Um, they're, they're on any given issue, there are always various sides to the issue. And all of those sides need to be represented. And all of those sides need to have a voice to, to try and bring things at least to a, a reasonable uh, consensus that, that uh, works to benefit wildlife. People need to get, get together and talk in a way that uh, is productive for both sides, but most importantly is productive for the wildlife that they're interested in. Uh, I think we have to be uh, consistent in our message, you know, and what we deliver to the public and how we manage these landscapes. Uh, it's pretty important to have all of us biologists kind of working down the same path. You have to be able to relate with farmers and ranchers and those types of things in order to get accomplished what you want on the, on the land. And it's all about um, working with other people to resolve issues that are out there. Wildlife and the environment are very important to me as a, as a person. I, I, that's really what drives me. It's my big passion in life um, as a hunter and a conservationist. And I think it all started as a kid, just getting outdoors and spending time with my family. And now it's uh, family and friends that uh, we look forward to being outdoors all year round. Uh, hunting is important to me because it gives me a chance to get outside and get outdoors and connect with Mother Nature. Um, it gives me time to bond with my brother and my father, who uh, taught me at a very young age. I believe I was eight when I first fired a shotgun. And uh, it's something I believe like kind of shapes you into who you are. Wildlife matter to me because they're such a great symbol of why natural systems and functioning ecosystems are so important. Well, people may not understand the ecology of, of wildlife. They see wildlife all the time and so it's, it's a gateway to, to engaging uh, the public in, in really appreciating the environment and why a healthy functioning ecosystem uh, really makes life better. It improves the quality of life for all of us and so I think wildlife can be that, um, that piece that we use to attract the public in and get them to understand uh, why uh, managing how we live and care for the earth and, and integrate with uh, the activities that affect the ecosystem are so important. One of the things that's so meaningful about wildlife is that they represent sort of what came before and what will be here after um, and there's so much capacity and interest within the biodiversity of wildlife that I find so inspiring. Interesting creatures have interesting adaptations and survive some of the harshest environments on earth and are really well uh, positioned to sort of be here before us and, and continue on after us. Well, my personal perspective on why wildlife matters to me is that I like to look at the ecosystems as a whole and I know that they are part of a web. So a lot of what my background is is in general natural resources and they're part of that puzzle piece in there. So without wildlife we wouldn't have the complete puzzle. A wildlife matters to me because it's kind of like watching the weather channel and the barometer. Uh, to me, having wildlife in one's life is important. Uh, whether you hunt or fish or like bird watching, it's just knowing that if the wildlife, if fish and wildlife populations are healthy, uh, that the environment is doing okay. So I just think it's very uh, paramount of paramount importance for us to uh, appreciate the, the health of wildlife populations. And having them for the future, uh, for future generations, is what we should all strive for. Um, many of my talks to youth in, in elementary school and high schools, uh, and even teaching hunter safety courses, it's amazing in, in a one day event that you can impact one person's life. It's interesting when you're dealing with natural resources and wildlife that, that uh, uh, those talks and educational opportunities stick with young people. And that's where we can inspire future leaders to get involved with conservation. Getting these young people involved 
uh, while they're young enough to maybe not become a wildlife professional, but to take an appreciation for wildlife and nature out into whatever profession that they end up taking, because we certainly need lawyers and doctors and investment bankers who appreciate nature and appreciate wildlife. The youth of today who really are interested in the natural world, they're natural scientists, and um, we can use their phones that they're always on to, uh, to as a portal to get them interested and engaging with wildlife. I feel that there's currently a very big gap in between science and the public and I really want to help mend that gap so that you know normal everyday people that are not in higher education or researchers could really understand what we're doing and why wildlife management is important. Truly being out in nature is just one of the most amazing things that you could do and once you do that you realize how important wildlife is just to everything. I mean, it's just the heart and soul of everything. Um, I hope to provide a little bit of a useful insight into the things that are going on in our environment, and I hope to be able to tie kind of our generation to the past generation, because I know our generation can be kind of disconnected from nature, and I don't want to let all the successes and um, pursuits that the older generation made to just fall apart because our generation is disconnected and disinterested. So then, um, we're still always going to be learning about how best to be managing our earth because it's always going to be changing. Um, but I just want to be a part of the conservation part of it. Wildlife, there's, it's kind of, it's everything. It surrounds us. It's, there's a really healthy and important balance to it and I think it's really important for us to understand that without it we're kind of just in technology and in cemented landscapes which is means nothing there's 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 no there's nothing to pass down from that oh, I, I remember my dad we I grew up on a you know a small farm very poor farm and that was the times when you would get uh, uh, the Montgomery Ward catalog, you know, which, it, which you probably aren't aware of. That we, we, it was, you know, Montgomery Wards and Sears Roebuck, these big catalogs would come. They used to call them wish books. And they'd come in the mail, and you could order, you know, the pre-Amazon days, but it, you know, or they would have stores where you, you know, and, and you could go and find stuff. Well, I can remember sitting on my father's lap while he was going through this, and they, he opened up the page where they, they were selling uh, traps. And they had drawings of, of raccoon and mink and fox all around that. And I, I, I was probably four years old, I don't know. I was, oh, oh, wouldn't it be great to see those animals, you know? And, uh, uh, and working on the farm, of course, uh, I you know, got into hunting and fishing, and and, uh, and I still remember the first the f first time I saw a meadow lark again as a little kid looking out the window. I always, you know, English sparrows were all we saw around normally, and there was a meadow lark in the in the lawn, and I thought it was the most exotic species and the most exotic animal I'd ever seen. So, uh, wildlife and natural resources to me are what makes us human. Just had an interest in, in wildlife. When I was um, probably 10 years old, I designed my own trap to trap birds in the backyard uh, just to see if I could do it. And the first one I trapped was a cardinal. Um, and I learned that they uh, have a very strong bite at that point in time. And I've kind of career continued with that through the remainder of my career. I'm still interested in birds, do a little research there, but I, I, it's been a lifelong passion. From a personal perspective, wildlife matter to me because they are so comforting. I see other people comforted by them. Um, I, I, people gain comfort from them through food, through observing them, from learning about them. Uh, wildlife matter because they help sustain the natural world, which I think um, bridges a lot of things in our society. Wildlife matter, I think, to me, in a in a pers personal perspective, because to me they are they are a uh, a barometer of uh, society in the world that we live in. Um, how well we take care of wildlife, um, how much effort we put into preserving, 
uh, wildlife I think is a reflection of our social values and a reflection of our society as a whole and the things that uh, that uh, that people have come to to live for um, and to cherish. Wildlife mattered to me uh, in, a, in an aesthetic sense. I'm naturally interested in them, fascinated by them. I find them beautiful and, and interesting. Wildlife, like us, are dependent on the same ecosystems and we have strong connections between us. We're all in this together. Finding that passion for the outdoors, and I know that I have seen it in the eyes of my students and, and their spirits as they come through the wildlife degrees that I've been in part, part of, that really is rewarding for me. The intricacies of, of life cycles and the process of growth and interactions is just so fascinating. Over 50 years, one would think that, geez, you, you, you should kind of know it all by now. And again, that's, that's not the case. I'm still, still learning. As a boy, my future was shaped by my experiences in a very rural setting with animals. And I have come to view them as essentially no different than human beings. They are simply an other kind of life form on the planet. And I think if we cannot understand them, we will fail to understand ourselves. Wildlife are just ingrained as something I really care about and they're just kind of part of who I am and I hope they can be part of the world to come. So field experience is a must and it's super important and it cannot be undersold because um, I started getting my field experience when I was a freshman in my undergrad and I worked every single summer for the Forest Service just doing all kinds of different things from painting trees to surveying for birds and that really instilled the love of nature. So this is so important to provide field experience to students early in their career and the importance of it is two things and one is to expose those who have never had the opportunity to go in the field and don't really understand what it means to be outside and packing a backpack and um, you know to the degree that you camp or you know hike long distances but um, I think getting them involved in field experiences so that they're not afraid of the outdoors um, number number one and number Number two, just giving them that opportunity to connect directly with the resource. So um, that's the first step to helping them understand how they might want to study, research, manage the resource. I think field experience is, is tremendously important um, to give you an appreciation for how people do the work they do that they publish that you read about and give you confidence uh, in your own abilities. Um, I was fortunate that I was a forestry student as an undergrad and we did a lot of field work. Uh, and both of my graduate projects on ruffed grouse and black bears involved a lot of field work, capture and handling and vegetation sampling, uh, aerial surveys, so I got exposed to a whole range of things. I think my advice to a young professional interested in the field of wildlife is as much as we want to learn about specific animals or specific ecosystems and the habitats that are important to wildlife, Learning about people is, is so essential to be effective in a job as, as a wildlife professional because having all of the knowledge about animals is great, but if you can't communicate why it's important, we as, as humans on the earth um, know how our activities affect wildlife and how we can actually modify what we do to improve conditions for wildlife, then all of that knowledge really won't uh, be used to its best ad advantage. So I would say really um, force yourself to become a people person uh, and learn about how to communicate well. Uh, the networking opportunities are paramount. Uh, getting a mentor early in your career uh, and actually several mentors is of great importance and also uh, becoming a mentor. Work hard. Don't get discouraged. Always be honest and professional. Follow their interests. <laughs> Follow their dreams. Um, if you're going to be in this field, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to uh, build a strong foundation in science. Um, there's going to be requirements along the way you have to meet, but it's, it's well worth it. I would say, in addition to taking your classes, take, take every opportunity 
you can to get some hands-on experience. To interact with other grad students, it's not about competing and getting the highest grade. I saw some of that when I was going to school. It's about all working as a team, you know, and, and not doing it independently because you can get a lot more done if you work as a team member rather than, uh, than alone. You know? um, I think the, uh, the, the best advice, of course, for, for students uh, graduating and coming into the field is, is to first network as widely as possible. Um, always keep your options open as much as you can. Keep as many doors open as you can. Uh, at, at, certainly, when you, even when you get into a master's, you are not yet um, uh, pigeonholed into a particular area of wildlife or wildlife management. It's okay to go and study birds and then later on work on fish you're learning the principles and the concepts. So, so don't close the doors, network as widely as, as possible. Um, and in terms of technical skills, um, the, the most important technical skills I find these days are analytical abilities. And I, I suggest to, uh, to all students that you really, if you're, if you're really going to uh, make, it, make yourself marketable to a lot of agencies in particular, um, you need to have the, the uh, quantitative skills, so statistics, using things like our statistical software and that sort of thing, and you also need to be, um, have GIS skills. I most certainly do have the hope for the future of wildlife um, because the, uh, um, basically because of the human spirit to preserve those things that are important to the planet. I have, I'm delighted that the emphasis on non-game species has grown tremendously so that we can pull in non-hunters into the concept of conservation. Yeah, there, you gotta have hope. You always have to have hope. So. Seeing the young professionals coming after me is very gratifying. And uh, just the networking of older generations passing on the information to new generations, I think uh, gives me great hope uh, that the future of wildlife is in good hands. Yeah, I think you have to have hope, because if you don't have hope, what are you doing? Um, there's always a reason to find like a bad story in the news, especially in our field. So if you're not hopeful, then you're going to be in for a pretty depressing career. <laughs> it's very often uh, seems dismal and disheartening when you're in wildlife as you keep seeing you know more and more species become endangered and you see the pollution that we're causing this planet but if you were you wouldn't have hope if you were I mean, you wouldn't not have hope being in this field like you're in this field because you have hope for the future and you hope that you can be that person that helps change it my favorite animal is the white-tailed deer very popular in Illinois and in, uh, in North America and it's uh, allowed me to enjoy hunting and a lot of great opportunities to deal with my family uh, uh, and um, I enjoy the deer meat but I also enjoy the role that um, and I have appreciated the role that hunting plays in the, the conservation of our natural resources so I love working with white-tailed deer. <laughs> My favorite animal, that's an impossible question. That's impossible. Favorite animal is river, ot river otter, Lancer canadensis. I love them, they're like so fun, right? I would say frogs. Uh, African elephant. Ooh, boo, 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 boo. Favorite animal. Well, it depends, can I split it? Mammal and, and okay, elk. Elk are, are right there and oh, Birds, resplendent quetzal. Oh, my favorite animal. Um, it depends on the time of the year. I have to say black bears are probably my favorite animal, though I studied bears and, and for six years and still I'm interested in them. Still I'm an editor for one of the journals that deals with bear research. Um, they're just amazing critters, incredibly powerful, incredibly tolerant, incredibly adaptable, uh, have amazing physiology that allows them to do things that humans can't even dream of doing. Uh, so I don't know if there's a favorite, but the bear sticks out because as I've pointed out to many people, how many animals can you teach to ride a bike? So. <laughs> 
I am ecstatic to see, say that I have seen my first hedgehog in the wild. It was just tootling along uh, in our at our hotel grounds the last night before we were flying back to the States and I nearly jumped up and down but I didn't want to scare it and it was just doing its own little hedgehog thing and you know they're a charismatic creature that you see in all sorts of art and textiles and pictures and I had never seen a live one in the wild and I was so excited. <laughs> oh dear I have to tell you that it's elk and in Canada we call it wapiti and I will always call them near and dear. They have carried me through my career from my youngest days in my career to an extraordinary um, study that I did on Mount St. Helens after it erupted and now after a 17-year project in the Yaha Tenda in Canada. So definitely elk. So my favorite animal is the belted kingfisher. And part of the reason why is that uh, when I was driving to my dad's memorial service in his 1977 Land Cruiser, his memorial service was held at a wildlife area. And it was obviously a very emotional time for me. But as I, every time I would go around a corner as I got closer to this wildlife area, I'd see a kingfisher up on the wire. And then I'd take another turn and I saw another kingfisher on the wire. And then during his memorial service, these kingfishers were doing these amazing displays. And so ever since that moment, whenever I see a kingfisher, I, I think of my dad, but I also think what an amazing animal with a giant head. How is it possibly surviving? So I like animals who, uh, who are a little funny looking, um, but they're also just so skilled. They're such skilled fishers. And uh, I love watching them. I love hearing them. When I hear one, it gets me so excited. I'd have to say I've got two favorite animals. My first favorite animal is the California spotted owl because it's the way that I got my first job in the Forest Service. But my first job wasn't working studying spotted owls, it was studying my second favorite animal, the bald eagle, because that's the animal I was hired to, to study because I applied for a job to survey for spotted owls. Well, there's just so many, but I've always had a very fond place in my heart for woodcock. And I'm not sure why, is it because they're secretive? Um, they have that neat thing where their eyes kind of migrate when they're young uh, to the sides of their heads um, because they probe around for earthworms. <laughs> uh, they're very challenging to hunt. <laughs> I've just always been fond of woodcock. <laughs> yeah, try and pick one, yeah. Um, well, research-wise, um, I think the, uh, the easiest and sometimes the most fun to work with were snowshoe hares. Um, but I like moose, probably better than I like caribou. Um, and wolves are always fun. It's a hard choice, at least in uh, terms of, of uh, what I've worked with. So maybe I should suggest my favorite animal is uh, uh, a pet golden retriever.